And Marie, how are you? I'm good. How about you? I'm great. So um, I love your background. Thanks. Um, so uh, I take it that you're Anne Marie because she has the account for Zoom? Correct. Okay. Um, so I'm going to try to behave myself today. Um, Do you want to start your video? Oh, am I not on? Nope. Okay, so what do I do? Oh, there we are. Okay. There gotcha. you go. I've been doing house projects for the last couple of days. Um, so what's new in planning? I saw the wayfinding deal. Yep, we're still going to work on that. We've got a meeting coming up in May for the commission. Um, so I'll get information out for that. And so will that involve fishers or is that the miners that you mentioned the other day? The miners. Okay. What's your sense of when things are going to happen with fishers? Probably a couple of months. We'll have I'm an sorry? update in May. Okay. I'm just, just thinking about how to gear up. Can you hear me now? We can hear you, can't see you. There we go. Okay. All right, there we go. Hey. All right. So it looks like So it's 11 o'clock. Um you know, who else is on? Do we have other people on the call? We've got a couple people listening, yes. Okay. All right, so this is the, um, um, what is today? Wednesday, the 29th uh, uh, subcommittee meeting for sea level rise. And so we're gonna pick up where we left off uh, a couple of weeks ago. And um, uh, I guess talk about how to uh, go forward. So um, Janelle and I had had a brief discussion last week and one of the uh, things we discussed, or the thing we discussed was uh, breaking this up into manageable tasks so that we could uh, move forward on each of them and do them progressively. So the, the, the three um, proposed uh, subtasks under this would be, uh, the first one, which should be the easiest and least um, controversial would be uh, infrastructure controlled by the city and the uh, BPW relative to sea level rise. And um, this is something that we are um, doing on an ad hoc basis now through the city engineer as infrastructure gets built. But this would be a way of adding it to the code so that it was clear what those guidelines are for uh, future infrastructure. Um, the second task would be to handle uh, subdivisions, those things covered by uh, subchapter uh, 170 of the code um, relative to sea level rise, seeing as they are uh, all greenfield or brownfield sites potentially. Um, where new uh, developments were going in, which would include new dedicated infrastructure. And were probably the ones that were uh, the biggest bang for the buck and uh, the biggest long-term issue for risk for the city. And the third section then would be redevelopment and uh, redevelopment and, and construction those things falling under uh, 197 of the code and under the building uh, code. So this would cover properties that um, were either uh, uh, going for use or other types of changes under 197 um, or going through the building department 
and the sections of 197 relative to setbacks and uh, uh, lot coverage and elsewise are applicable would be um, uh, implemented. So those are the three subtasks. And I guess now what we need to decide is, as we talked about, you know, timeframes. Um, one of the things that's a, a large unknown at this point is when the um, uh, governor's orders are going to be lifted. Um, if you read the tea leaves right now, it does not look like that's going to be before the middle of June. So um, some of these things, it, I think, I feel it's imperative that they be discussed in a public open forum, since there is going to be impact on um, the residents of, of the city. Um, so we're going to have to adjust the schedule as time goes on relative to that. But that should not forestall us from getting started and getting the framework out there so that people can start to look at it. And then we can schedule public hearings once the orders get lifted. So based upon that, um, what, what, what I was going to propose is that we, uh, uh, for the first item, um, the infrastructure, we shoot for like three months from now. <clears throat> for the second item, which is subdivision, we put a tentative date of the end of the year. And then we, once again, as I said, that we'll have to readdress it. If this drags on too long, that may not be feasible from the public hearing perspective. And then the third one, which is the um, uh, redevelopment construction, uh, I think at this point we put a TBD on that and see how the second phase goes. Now, a lot of what we learn in the second phase is going to be directly applicable to the third phase. So at, at that point, at this point, I'd like to turn uh, open it up for questions and discussion. Um, Summer, your thoughts? Um, so I, I, uh, I guess I understand the importance of, you know, sort of walking carefully, doing things one at a time. That makes sense. I guess the thing that comes to mind is for each of those three items, what kind of, um, you know, common consideration, common analysis will need to be done. I'm wondering if, you know, if at some point, for some period of time, we can be sort of carrying the three of them forward so that we're not, I mean, I, you know, maybe we'll just, it'd be a matter of, well, we start with this and, you know, we keep everything together and we're able to refine, we're able to start number two and number three, you know, halfway down the process. Um, I, I just assume that, well, I, that's, that, I guess, this, this isn't making much sense. I'm sorry. Um, well, I, I mean, I think it's important that we do things one at a time. Uh, I, as I, I can't remember if I said this in the call last time, but I, I guess the one worry I would have about having the subdivision thing be sort of later in the year is I would hate for us to have not gotten subdivision related stuff on the books before the next major subdivision comes in. Because I felt like so much of the conversation around certain aspects of subdivision in the in my brief time on this planning commission would have profited from better rules about sea level rise. Um, I'd hate to, you know, not have something more concrete on the books before a, another major subdivision would come in. I just hope that we can get it done before that happens. So the good thing there is if I, I the agree. pending doctrine ordinance is if we have something pending, then if something comes in after we've started um, introduced that and it's going through its process, then anything would have to comply. And again, the timeframes can speed up. It's just trying to give the expectations to the public to understand like, okay, it may take a little bit more time to get this one done. And depending on how the world goes, you know, making sure 
things get done in, in, a, in a manner that we can get them done in. Well, a, a couple of thoughts. First of all, Sung, I, I agree with you 100%. Um, and you know, as I said last time, you know, we've, we've, we've lost over two years already on getting this thing started. Um, but you know, starting with where we are, we're at right now, um, I would propose that item one and item two, we start concurrently, not that they're completely sequential. Because I do agree, some of the things we're gonna to have to um, decide on, the curve and the time frames um, are going to be things that are going to carry forward. Now, um, probably the first item infrastructure has got a different set of time frames than the latter two do. So that's one of the reasons why I feel comfortable with those being separated because once again, um, if we're talking about infrastructure that's only got a useful life of 20 years and is going to get rebuilt, it's not as much of a concern as putting a house in the ground or a development that's going to be there for 100 years. <clears throat> so I, I think they do have a certain amount of differences. Um, and, but Janelle, we've been coached by the solicitor that do we qualify as a pending ordinance? The ordinance actually has to be drafted under mm -hmm. consideration. So that's fairly far along in the process to Sumner's point before we can actually hang our hat on it. Um, that was my next, that was gonna be my next question. Yeah, uh, 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 just us taking this up and uh, bantering it about doesn't get us to- uh, Oh no, it doesn't get us to that, but I think just the way the world is going right now, I think, you know, I think we have a better shot of getting this to the pending ordinance section before another major subdivision comes in. Um, there could be one that comes in, but you know, I think we're gonna see some smaller stuff happen for a little bit, um, other than the stuff that's already kind of coming through. That's just my gut um, reaction to what's going on right now. Um, but I think we've got time, you know, it's not like we're, I think we're gonna be working full steam ahead. And I think we might actually be able to get through the first part, maybe even a little bit sooner, and then we can start working on that second one. Because um, I think if we look at um, the big picture for the first ordinance, I think to me it's it's getting the um, not just the infrastructure and and those types of options, but laying the groundwork for anything that would come f after. So you know, we say you know we're going to adopt the the blue line you know, the intermediate, you know, sea level rise, you know, then whatever comes after is then going to have to comply with that. It's just, we've adopted that, that's what's in the code. So then when we get to the redevelopment and the subdivisions, it's, it's getting them to fit into what we've already adopted, which is the blue line in certain time frames. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, um, are there, I, I mean, I'm fine with that. I, I kind of like what, what Tom suggested in terms of, uh, you know, keeping the infrastructure and major, or I guess subdivision process um, going concurrently to the extent that that makes sense. But where we need to buckle down and focus on something, obviously we can do infrastructure first. The, the first question that comes to mind is if the engineers, have or engineering has been doing this on an ad hoc basis i mean first of all you know if we roll our sleeves up what more needs to be done other than to formalize what they're already doing i'm not sure i'm familiar with what they're doing well uh i think we need to provide more guidance relative to um which curve because the curve that was adopted by the city is out of date so you mean you know, in terms of the numbers that that relate to that curve correct okay because th that was the curve that was in place in 2016 and there's one subsequent to that so um you know so the process of which curve and flushing out the discussion as to um 
what time frames should be considered in developing infrastructure um, is important. So well, I actually in have my a sense is some you know there's different kinds of infrastructure with different kinds of time frames. Correct, correct, so, and that's what I think. We, you know, we, if you go back and look at the me minutes of the meeting, we discussed it, but to actually put that into uh, the code as far as um, you know what the, that discussion was. For example, going back to you know a road gets rebuilt every 20 years or so, but if you put in a wastewater treatment plant, the physical structure of that treatment plant is going to be there for, you know, 80, 100 years. So, you know, not all infrastructure is the same, or, but replacing a major component inside the building is going to get replaced again. And it's really not the same as it's not changing the risk factor. So, those are the type of things that we can flush out. To provide some some guidance so that um, there's uniformity as we go forward, and also that the public understands what we're doing. So, so one question that I've been wrestling with now for quite a while is, you know, whatever numbers we we kick out of this process, um, you know, the idea of sea level rise is. You know, at least the way I look at it is it's based on some sort of an average level of the sea. Um, you know, we all know watching the water go by on the beach or the canal that it's going up and down every day. And there are a lot of factors that determine how high it goes and how low it goes. So the question is, you know, if, if, we, if we go on a sea level rise component as the sea level rise is the sea, we, we pick a number in the future and say this is sea level in the future, there's, there's a range of values around that sea level value, that elevation, that may or may not be important for any given um, aspect of the city. You know, for example, when we get into um, higher value items like the sewage treatment plant, it may be important that we're never seeing flooding at certain, you know, at certain elevations. That won't necessarily be captured by the sea level per se. We're going to have to look at elevations, you know, the, the nuisance flooding and the storm surge flooding that happens on top of whatever sea level value, whatever sea level is picked. Right, but I think, I think we had discussed last time that um, anything that we did here would be um, kind of a three-part component. It would be the flood maps which already take into account what you just described, added to sea level rise, added to the freeboard, which is that margin of, you know, the uncertainty margin. So, you know, if you take, once again, the uh, critical infrastructure is supposed to be built to the 500 year floodplain. So you take the 500 year floodplain you add X number of years of sea level rise and you add 18 inches of freeboard, that's your new, your, your new building. Because that's what your, uh, right now, your, your elevation certificates for building in the floodplain are the, the first two components minus sea level rise. Is that correct, Janelle? Yeah. Currently, if you're getting anything, you're proving that you're in compliance with the the city's uh, floodplain, which is saying you're so far above the floodplain and mm -hmm. in compliance with the, the, the free board. So I think there's a couple of ways we can look at this. Um, one, I think we're looking at a new section of code, but I also think we could end up um, doing some other things to like the floodplain section of the code. Um, I've done additional reading and I'm going to continue to do more reading on different examples. Um, but I think we need to settle on the curve and coming out of council, it was they wanted the blue line. And I think from having conversations and things I've heard is maybe looking at whatever the blue line is at the time the development is going in. So we recognize that 
The one that council looked at was a time and place, but it's now been replaced. So whatever the new adoption of that blue curve is, is that, and you know, like we get more research in like two years, it changes and it gets, you know, um, um, then the amount goes up, then we consistently are using the updated version of the sea level rise data. Does that make so, sense? Yeah, so um, the first thing that comes to mind is uh, with the, the updated version that do are we referencing the state sea level rise committee i can't remember what the formal title is but you know the john callahan updates yeah that's what you're talking about yeah i think what we could do in the code is reference the you know whoever the data is coming from if it's coming from the state going that whatever they have the most relevant recent data that they have is what we're we're going to require things to be built to for sea level rise All right, um, uh, on just a question um, about uh, Tom's point about all the different la layers of, of requirements. Do you imagine there being a map, some sort of, uh, you know, zone, sort of like what the 100-year the floodplain maps look like or the 500-year floodplain maps? Or do you see there be, and or do you see there being some sort of a, a minimum elevation that matters, you know, that can be laid out in code, you know, a, a, an elevation based off of number of feet above nav D88 or something like that? So I don't think we want to adopt a map because that's, again, a time and place. So if we just reference you know, most relevant data, because that will continue to change, then we're not limited to the, to a map, um, or we just reference the state data that shows the mapping. I think we can get away with that, and I know we can. Um, now, I've read a couple of um, ordinances and projects and reports that other places are doing, and they're just, and one of them was just, okay, well, you've got your free board, well, now you're going three feet above that free board for this type of development. So you're just adding to the free board um, to kind of get things to kind of go to address the sea level rise. So that is an option, you know? So we've got 18 inches and it's like, okay, well you have 18 inches, but based on your sea level rise, you're now at three feet. That's your new free board for development. So, so built into that, that kind of a, a process is an assumption, as I see it, that, you know, whatever number we choose, whatever elevation we choose, um, there is a, there's an engineering solution, there's a way to build at that elevation. And my sense is looking around the landscape here, um, as we as we start raising the elevations that are necessary for building, there are other pieces of the puzzle that, that have to come along in order for building to make sense at that elevation. You and I, Janelle, have talked offline about, you know, having roads at a certain level. Um, so uh, not sure how to, how, to, how to treat that, how to deal with it, but it, I, I mean, maybe this is just the way it needs to be done is we just specify these elevations based on whatever time frame and so on and the number of feet of freeboard and all of that. But, you know, as these elevations go up, you know, for example, we're going to we're going to start to squeeze the headroom of houses as they've been being built in the city. Um, yeah, that's why I thought we would do that, as we've discussed in a different portion of the code and not with the first one because we get into a lot of different um like how do we deal with height if we're requiring things to be built differently but i think if we just focus on right now it's like okay critical infrastructure you know the roads that we have control over the facilities that we have control over you know we've got so basically everything that's in the public domain rather than something that's in the pri private domain correct just for our starting uh, off point i i slight twist on that is that i think that's why I think it's important to have the split between item two and item three, because the subdivision, which is starting out as a greenfield site, you're, you know, 
I think we have we have many constraints we put on that in the subdivision code. But once you start going into redevelopment construction, then you start getting into property rights more. And that's why I think, Sumner, to your point, the, the last one is going to be a very difficult one because, you know, there's a takings issue, um, you know, what's reasonable, uh, do we need to provide dispensation on the heights like we did for currently for um, the beach versus the town, the different heights, the flood level. Um, and that's the one that we're, is going to be um, a real Complex. act. Um, and, and the public needs to be able to chime in on that. I mean, the public's opinion is going to count as far as um, risk versus uh, benefits. So, so the the um, the progression from the early items we're going to deal with and to later ones are going from a public to a very private domain. A more private. private, yeah. Okay. I mean, because even the the third one is still got a public aspect in that it's the it's, it's the city that's left picking up the tab for emergency rescue and reconstruction. And so we're, we're never touching strictly on private issues. It's the public risk or cost associated with those issues. So, and I know I've had conversations with the engineers and other examples from other places is like the state of Maryland. And I know Brett can correct me if I'm wrong because he's listening is that the state of Maryland just said all new roads have to be built to a certain sea level rise. And that was done in a number of years ago. And I think we can look at that as well if we're going to rebuild a road that it has to go to a certain sea level rise. Um, but we also have to make sure that it um, um, is taking into account that we don't end up, you know, if we're raising the road, then we end up flooding the, the houses. We have to take some considerations into, into play when we're looking at all of that. But I think right now, if we just look at you know, what we have control over, what we've got, because um, then we can get into the height and the freeboard and the houses at a, you know, at a different, you know, junction um, down the road. But I think, you know, understanding, okay, is City Hall okay? How is the road to the wastewater treatment plant? You know, how's the Canary Creek pump station? You know, because um, I did, for, as um, just for everybody who's listening, um, there is a report that was done that GMB had done for the city about um, resiliency and evacuation critical infrastructure vulnerability study that I sent to everybody. It's also on the website under the sea level rise. Um, and it had some areas of study, you know, and a lot of them were some of the, the roads that we don't have control over. You know, the Canary Creek Bridge, you know, New Road, parts of Savannah Road. Um, you know, but it also had, you know, some of the, the things that we need to look at, you know, when we're looking at redoing roads and infrastructure, you know, um, the water reclamation facility, you know, the, the parks, you know, the parking lots, you know, we're gonna, turns out, you know, beach parking lot one and two came into, you know, a city facility and if we're not addressing them for sea level rise, then does that have an impact on economic development for the city? So I think if we, we focus on those those items, um, then we're we've got a good jumping off point of like, okay, we're gonna rebuild a road, we're gonna look at a parking lot, you know, we're gonna look at those city hall, fire stations, etc. Are there, Tom, um, I, I mean the other the other piece of the infrastructure it seems to me that's important. I know I've talked with um, uh, with Charlie about this, uh, is the stormwater system, you know, do if does BPW have elevations for all of the outfalls as well as all the sort of stormwater drains and stuff that connect to those those pipes? Um, not all. There's been an ongoing process to get them. Because it seems to me that's part of the part of the equation in terms of looking at infrastructure. Maybe that's already on the BPW list and we don't need to worry so, about it. So, I mean, uh, the information that we did have was provided to uh, 
um, AECOM for when they did the flood study. But it is it is recognized that there are some uh, that we don't have yet. <clears throat> okay. And um, General, I mean, you you're talking about Maryland. Uh, Del Dot also has in place a requirement for new road construction. That's one of the things that changed the design of the Canary Creek replacement bridge about uh, two years ago, I guess, maybe a year and a half ago, uh, that they raised the elevation of that bridge by three feet. Right, and I think it's also something we're gonna have to work with Delta and make sure we're coordinating, because if, if the city starts building to one level of sea level rise and Delta's looking at another one, how do those roads connect and, and make sure, you know, it, it's all working together as a, as, um, as a network? Well, I'm assuming that the Del Dot stuff is is all tied to the Executive 41, Executive Order 41 language. Is that right? Yes, the, they are required to look at sea level rise when they do their development. What we're looking to do is require sea level rise. They are required to look at sea level rise and take it into consideration. Um, but what we're looking to do is create an ordinance that says, okay, if we're going to do something, we want it built to certain levels. And I think, again, when we were, we were talking last time, um, we have an idea of, you know, some things are gonna last longer than others. You know, clearly the treatment facility is built to last much longer than a subdivision road, but we wanna make sure that when we do redo a subdivision road that it works well with the, um, the, uh, the houses surrounding it. Um, so we don't end up with issues um, that, that could be negative. Like if we start doing a road and building it to one degree to, to a sea level rise, but none of the houses are getting rebuilt, especially in redevelopment, we have to take things into consideration, leave ourselves some flexibility. And I think throughout this ordinance and the, I see this as being multiple ordinances starting off and just keep building, is that there needs to be some flexibility in there um because we're gonna have to recognize certain there might we might be able to get it to a certain level but we might may not be due to funding and impacts surrounding the other areas we might not be able to get um certain things done um at the, at the level we want to at the time we're looking to if that makes you know, sense there's been, there's been some some really interesting questions raised in the chat. Is it worth trying to address some of these? Yeah, well, no, I've been kind of looking at them. Um, I think we've addressed all three of them. The, the only one is, uh, uh, you know, Kaya brought up about rather being fixed formulas, it being uh, relational. And, and I agree with her. You know, we talked about, I, I don't think just adding three foot to the freeboard I, I think it should be three feet plus whatever the curve is because yeah. change over time. And yeah, no, I think if we adopt that, that curve as it changes over time, then you're building to whatever that curve is at the time you're building. Um, yes. So that, that gives that, um, that change that goes through it. So it's like, okay, I'm going to build a house. I had to build three feet above, but you know, 10 years later, my neighbor builds a house sea level rise has changed, they got to build four feet, you know, so it all complies with whatever right. code is in effect or that curve that's in effect. So we, we get the things that are continuing to address the concerns of sea level rise. And, and Joe had mentioned about the height of the buildings. We've talked about that, that that's which would be critical in uh, specifically the phase three. And yes. then uh, Brett had brought up about uh, doing it in three uh, phases, which is what I think we've all discussed and agreed to. Yeah, Joe's, Joe's comment that just came in about the Canary Creek Bridge, I'm assuming that th it'd be pretty straightforward to find out what elevations Del Dot is imagining for this Canary Creek Bridge. Yeah, I mean, we'll yes. definitely take a look at all of that information. I'll reach out to Del Dot, making sure we're doing that. Um, 
you know, because we want to make sure that if we start elevating roads, that they're working with that, they're working with the stormwater management, how are we dealing with infrastructure for water and sewer lines. So it's a lot of coordination with DELDOT, DPW, um, the city, the city agencies to make sure that we're all, you know, on the same page when we're looking at redevelopment or critical infrastructure. We're going to call this section critical infrastructure. And I know we keep, for everybody online, we keep going back to like examples for houses. I think that's just easier to explain than it's like, oh, we're just going to raise a road. Yeah. All right. So the, the next step here on this, uh, I think uh, we, we need to, Focusing on the uh, the critical infrastructure portion is um, uh, Janelle. You said you had some thoughts as to where in the code to put that. Yeah, I think I, I'm going to take a shot at you know kind of putting something together, just some some ideas to float by everybody. Um, kind of like okay, where it could fit in the code, kind of things we're talking about, just to put like a rough outline of what I think the code could look like. And then I think we could get into a deeper discussion about like, okay, are we good with that wording? Do we like, you know, if we're going to point out certain infrastructure, are we good with those time frames? Um, you know, take a look at some of that. Does that sound like a good, good next mm -hmm. step? Sure. And I'm happy for feedback. Uh, people have ideas or or comments. And again, we're just going to look at critical infrastructure. Um, you know, so I haven't, go ahead. Um, I haven't looked at that GMB report since you first sent it around, but it seemed to me, as I remember, it referenced the 25 year and 40 year um, timeframes that the council talked about. Mm -hmm. And it sort of extrapolated, you know, it interpolated, I guess I should say, on that blue curve, what those elevations would be. Um, with each of these categories, do we imagine having those um, kinds of, you know, looking into the future a certain number of years based on whatever it is that we're considering? You know, if it's a sewer plant or it's a road, you know, are we gonna build a table, I guess is what I'm asking, some sort of a table that says where we're, we're, we're considering this, we're going to be thinking about 25 years. We're considering that we're going to be looking at 100 years. I, I, I would think that a table would be difficult because there's lots of different types of infrastructure. I, I think concepts of the way infrastructure would fit in with examples maybe might be better. Let me take a look and see what other places have done and kind of put like some things together and see, maybe we just look at, you know, bigger picture concepts, um, you know, that we can then end up building on. If we do a table or a listing with some years to the side of what we were looking at, you know, like, okay, we're looking at a road and we're looking at, you know, those 25 years out or like council directed us that, you know, they want to look at capital facilities 25 years out. So we just put that number with it and go, okay, capital facilities, 25 years out. This is where you have to be, you know, whenever that comes in. So it might not, we, sorry, my brain's light bulb's going off, um, that we might have um, a couple ideas of, uh, of getting that into, without calling everything out, um, just putting them into groups. And I'm pretty sure that didn't make sense, but, my brain it, 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 it did um, yeah, that was okay that, that was kind of what I, I i was thinking also is that um you know groups of type of infrastructure versus individual Pulling everything like, out like we have in our use tables yeah. staying away from single family attached single family detached you know that level of detail because we're never going to wind up being all inclusive So whatever whatever um, level of detail is required, I guess I'm just concerned about lumping all capital into the same bin. You know, streets are one thing, as we've mentioned, sewer plants and water plants and things like that are a whole other matter. And I, I, I just don't wanna 
be building those longer term, more expensive items that really can't afford to be flooded to a 25 year time frame. So I think the I good thing, and I, I, I concur, I think what we have though is the direction that council gave us is that capital infrastructure is gonna be looked at at 25 years. And I think what we can do is give them a couple options. Like, okay, this is what 25 years will get you. But we also suggest, which is what they told us they wanted to do was look at 25 years, but it's like, okay, well, what about if you look at the 40 year? Well, I'm going to push back slightly, Janelle. That's what, that's what council said two and a half, three years ago. Um, we have been asked to look at this with a fresh um, set of eyes and with the current conditions. So yeah. for, council gets final decision. We're only a recommending body, but um, I think we need to look at, at the time frames and the curves and the elevations from what makes sense now and what we want to recommend, not just what council said two, three years ago. No, I'm, I'm thinking we give them options. It's like, okay, this is what you wanted to do was look at 25 years, but how about looking at 40 years or 100 years? I think we give them options and I think we can put options together and like, okay, this is what we want to take forward. Um, I think we, uh, took, we take a couple of different things together and it's like, well, what makes the most sense? You know, because what makes the most sense might not be the most economically feasible option so maybe we have to take that into consideration as well so i think if we have a couple of options just to discuss and then we put forward what um what we think is the best thing to go to to council for their consideration correct because what that's the whole purpose of the public hearings yeah. is the public's input but then at the at at the end of it it's what does the planning commission recommend to mayor and city council they can either accept it, change it, remand it back to, or send it back to us, it wouldn't be a remand. But um, that's their prerogative as the authorizing body. But I feel we owe them our best recommendation. I agree with that. Whatever form that may take, it may not fit neatly in that 25 year, 40 year distinction. And as, as Tom suggests, it may mean that the council says, well, no, we really like the 25, 40 year thing and we're gonna have to figure out how to squeeze it back into that scheme. I, I, I gotta say, having um, read through the minutes of that meeting where those numbers were um, uh, developed, I got the distinct impression that that was based on the best available understanding of the situation at the time. I got the distinct feeling that there there was room for refinement on a, on a bunch of different fronts, whether the numbers made sense, what value, what curve, all of those things. I think it, as we work through this, if we find a compelling reason to put forward a, a different, um, uh, you know, an alternative treatment, I think we should do that. Um, whether or not the council chooses to apply it, uh, that's their prerogative, but uh, it just seems to me we should do the best job we can here. No, I just saw theirs as a jumping off point and a good starting point. And then, you know, to look at, okay, what does it look like with that? And then what does it look like with different options? Um, okay. So you're going to take a crack at the infrastructure? Yes. So uh, what do we need to be doing? Do we, we, I mean, what do you, what else do you need from us at this point? If you have any ideas or suggestions, um, I think I've got a, I've, I've got it, you know, I think we're going to look at the, I'm going to look at like a framework of things we want to, want to focus on just for sea level rise. Um, the curve information, and then we're definitely going to focus on capital facilities and then kind of give different options. Is there anything else you want me to focus on for this? this kind of beginning frameworking. No, I think that'll give us a good start. And again, call, email, if you if you have ideas that just kind of be like, hey, what do we look about like this? Um, then I can kind of put it back together and then we can discuss it at the next meeting. Okay, and um, I just, 
I attended the last floodplain committee meeting, and if my memory serves right, um, uh, Melanie was interested in trying to make sure we weren't all working in completely separate paths, and I'd like to find a way to have a dialogue going so that we're not all going to end up in different places. Yep, nope, uh, that's my job. Make sure that we're all playing, that, you know, we're all on the same path, we're, we're keeping it together, and that everything will work together. Um, so I'm trying to keep, keep an eye on that, making sure that, you know, we're all going the same direction. Right. And that whatever they do works with what we're doing, what we do works with what they're doing. Right, I, I mean, I, I, I know there's sort of a legal basis for having everything off in different portions of the code, but from a, a comprehension perspective, it's kind of nice to have an overarching way of treating some of these things. And I, I hope we're not going to bury what we do here in various little pockets of the code. Given the city's relationship to the sea, I think it's important that we keep this as a high level um, issue somehow in the code. Whether or not that doesn't happen until the next comprehensive plan, I don't know. But I mean, I just don't want to see it buried deep inside no, I, I, pieces of the code. So I agree. Let, let's see what the, how the drafts start coming out. This can't be just sentences added in various places. And I don't think that's what Janelle is proposing. No. So um, it, it needs to be a comprehensive um, uh, policy for the city. So yeah, Agreed. I think to, the way in my head it, it's looking at is like, you know, we have the floodplain portion in the zoning code. We'll have a sea level rise portion in the zoning code. And then then we need to make, so it'll be its own item, but then we'll also have to make sure it piggybacks so all the other sections of code talk to each other and reference that there's sea level rise. So Right. I mean, as you know, I've been attending these other two subcommittees and raising sea level rise issues. I just want to make sure it all fits together. Yes, that is, and, that is, my task is to make sure that as the planner that everything works together, you know, and we're addressing so so all and nobody's working in a vacuum. It's all my job is to make sure it's working as a holistic big approach and that nothing contradicts it with the others. Right. Great. All right, so let's set a time for the next meeting. Um We have a uh, planning, let's see here. So we're into May. Yes. You want to do four weeks out, it's the 27th. The 27th is no good, I have, that's BPW meeting. Okay. Um, can we do it on the uh, the 20th is open now because the planning commission meeting got canceled then. Planning commission got moved to the 28th. But yeah, well, the we, 20th we is had, good. We actually had two meetings scheduled. Yes. Yeah, 20th got canceled and the 28th is still in place. So 20th at, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with just about any of these dates. Okay, so the 20th at 11? Okay. Sure. Okay. I will get that set up and I'll get a draft coming out. I'll get it to you a couple of days before the meeting. All right. Great. Okay. Great. Okay. Thank you very much, Janelle. Thanks, Sumner. You're welcome. Thank you. Everybody have a good afternoon. All right. Thanks. You too.